What is up everybody? It's the Inhuman One here with part 5 of the ultimate 100% guide for Lies of P. Now this walkthrough will allow you to reach all of the, um, nearly all of the achievements that you can obtain in one playthrough. Um, we'll get all the special weapons as well. And of course we'll get the true ending, which is the Rise of P ending. So, in the last stream we went ahead and took down the Archbishop Andreas at the St. Frangelico Cathedral, and now we're heading to the Malum District. As per usual, we always ended off with a little visit to Hotel Crop so that we could um, pretty much close up all loose ends, tie up any loose ends, I guess is the best way to say it, and uh, upgrade our weapons. So what we're going to do is see if we can level up or upgrade, and then from there, we'll go ahead and head over to the Malum District. This area is going to be a bit tough. Let's talk with Eugenie to get some additional dialogue. And I don't know how I'd react. How do you thank the man who saved your life? <laughs> I'm so glad that someone so kind has reached safety. And speaking of safety, please take care of yourself out there. So she has very special ties to Alidoro, the treasure hunter. And we're going to find out why. Now, based on what I did last time, I did not get, let's just say, like the good ending for her uh, quest. But I would say that it's probably possible. You do have a little bit of leeway, and there is some forgiveness. Um, you don't have to do 100% lies, 100% truth to obtain either ending. So just be mindful of that. But anyways, very, very cool story. You're not the only one who's curious. Most people get around to asking where I'm from. My looks give it away, don't they? Suffice it to say, I'm from the country of the morning, beyond the ocean. But I wouldn't be much of a tour guide. All I know about it is their weapons. My family was a house of weapon specialists. It's quite a reputation to live up to. They almost took charge of planning for the grand exhibition. But that's their reputation, not mine. And they deserted me when I was little. I don't even know who they are. And my reputation is my own. I suppose my only connection to them would be weapons. So I'm an orphan, and that hardly makes me exotic and cross. Can I help you with anything else? All right, so let's see. I don't think we can really upgrade. I guess we could. We definitely can upgrade just a bit, and I will certainly do that. We have some Crescent Moonstone. Not much. Not much. Uh, let's go see if we have any other Crescent Moonstone we can purchase from either Polandina or Pulcinella. That's Dark Moon Moonstone, so we can't use that. That's for special weapons. And let's see if this guy has any. Nope. So that's it. That's all we can do for now, and that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our next area. Um, I guess we could use this, whatever, this last little bit to level up. disease before the disaster Krat was a city of light a city of joy I wish I could go back even just for one day very cool um, little hint there about time that she's talking about going back to the past and all that kind of neat let's level up I forgot she had that dialogue I almost skipped it how rude of me all right, we're going for some vitality. Like I said, vitality, capacity, and then one of your, whichever one your weapon scales with is the best. Otherwise, it's pretty simple. We're going to go to um, the Archbishop Andreas' um, altar stargazer. From here, we're going to walk the path of the pilgrim. And there's some pretty cool things I want to show you guys here. This area is really fun. You're going to deal with a new type of enemy that's in the same class. So the same class as carcasses, but, so they're still weak to the salamander dagger, but um, they're just kind of new additions to the carcass family. So <laughs> you're going to love it, I, I hope. All right, so here we go. That's the stargazer. Always head towards the painting of the archbishop if you're lost and you don't know where to go. 
and we're gonna work our way around here go down this lift there wasn't really anything there's nothing actually to interact with or pick up so don't worry about it now there are a few um, elevators that have secrets and a lot of times if you can't tell like you can always position yourself in a way that you know you're looking down or up and you can see like maybe walls that you can jump through or things like that like open areas there will be one such secret in this area so uh, there is an elevator secret one of two that I can recall off the top of my head so this one of course and then the one that's much much later in the game alright so let's go ahead and make our way through here we're gonna see some new friends and that's him right there you know what we'll just do that the puppet strings fantastic for just upsetting interrupting enemy attacks things like that watch out for the bear traps they get me just about every time in this sequence so even though I know where they're at I will get caught so don't worry about it learn from my mistakes this is an area as well that has uh, a really cool secret was just a small town on the coast of little importance before Elysian Boulevard was built this place literally was all there was of Karat. But when some in the city prospered, they they left the old town behind. Through isolation and neglect, Karat's first incarnation became nothing but dangerous alleys and desperate slums. On the bright side, I guess, the whole city of Karat's pretty much like that now. Uh, the old town caught up with the new. It's true what they say. A receding tide sinks all boats. All right, now carefully look at this star gauge that's going to be right there. Okay, I want you guys to take a look at it. We're going to come up pretty quickly on it. So that is a star gauge we cannot interact with. I'm assuming it's tied to some sort of DLC or unsolved mystery that we just haven't fa figured out yet, but really cool stuff there. Also we can pick up this, which is the Smiling Bunny Mark. It is a collectible. It's actually really important for a number of reasons. You can use it to activate a um, or allow a black merchant to do business with you, and also you can use it to um, give to Pulcinella, which we'll do by the end of this session here. So as you can see to the left we do have a shortcut door. We'll be opening that up here before long. We can get a good look of things up here too. And grab this item. So there's a ton of ambushes here. This is an area where you want to look up. You'll be surprised at how many people like don't do that <laughs> in games. Like look up. Or in real life even, like, there's so many things that can happen from above. But we're going to get rid of all the possibility to get ambushed there. Should be a little puppy dog right there. Take him out. Again, we're going to deal a great amount of damage, not only because we're utilizing uh, the weakness of this particular enemy type, but also because we've upgraded our weapon considerably. So look up here. So what do I always tell you? There's never a free item, right? If you look up, you see this little bro. Just be playing on the trees. And that would hurt you pretty good if it falls on your head, so... We can grab this item, which is our third elemental weapon. I will say that I, I only use it for human fights, but then I realized that the moveset's really nice because it has range. It's a ranged spear. I'll go ahead and show you. But I did prefer using other weapons in lieu of this one. It, it's a nice weapon though. And it does cause acidic or decay damage which can increase the rate at which you can destroy an enemy's weapon. Which even works on bosses which is really cool. But uh, I preferred the salamander dagger and the electric coil. Electric coil stick head. Very awesomely named weapon. So anyways. I went with those two. I did use it in my first playthrough, though, against uh, actually the boss that we're going to be facing in this uh, this stream. There you go. All right. So, 
So far, so good. Pretty smooth. Now, remember, anytime there's an item that you think is just free, you watch, like right over here, for example, always look up. We got lots of friends just hanging out in the trees. How did they get there? I have no clue. I do encourage you to ask them, though. There's a little doggy up here. You just want to get... Uh, stay pretty aggressive with those guys because they can attack you pretty unpredictably with their tentacles on their backs and it's a really annoying. So I, su I strongly suggest <laughs> you hit them before they hit you. Otherwise, it's really annoying. Alright, so I'm going this path because there is a strong enemy up above that I don't want to be fighting um, and, you know, alongside all these other bastards, so definitely gotta pick our battles here. There's tons of bear traps along the way. Alright, here we go. Now we get to have fun with one of the three little bears. Okay, big move. Ouch. That hurt. Remember, alternate R1s and R2s. I gotta get this in. Okay, there you go. That was scary. You don't get tons of items for it. I mean, you get a lot of items, but you don't get, like, the best items in the world. And that's not a big deal. I'm happy with that. We got some good stuff anyways. But yeah, alternate R1 and R2. R1, R2. That's going to make you strike faster than if you just do R1. The R1 spam is fine, but it's kind of weak. And then the R2 spam is okay, but it takes up lots of um, stamina. So just alternate fully charged R2 with R1 and continue doing that, and you'll be able to knock him out. So anyways, that was the, the bear. Pretty cool enemy. I thought it was really neat to see it. Um, so here, I'm going to do something a little different. And you can be like, why are you switching to this weapon? Well, I'll show you. We're going to switch to our electric uh, coil stick. And the reason being is because I feel like it's a little bit more powerful against um, the dimensional butterflies. And there will be one in this area. So you want to hug this, I guess, this little wall here. There will be an enemy that drops down. You can take him out. We can grab this so we don't, you know, we're not going to forget it or anything, but dimensional butterfly here, strike like crazy. Alright, that's dead. Now we can safely fight the rest of the enemies that appear, which there should be one other. There should be a chick. There, it is. there she is. There she blows. And now she's dead. Alright, so that can be annoying sometimes because... At this point in time, I hadn't upgraded my weapons at all. Zero upgrades as of this point. So the dimensional butterflies get more and more tanky. Um, sorry about that. Hit my microphone and crunched my that finger. Uh, but they do get more tanky. So it is important to you know kind of figure out the balance of okay, if I am gonna go ahead and upgrade my weapons, which I strongly suggest, you're gonna be much more suited for things like that, and you won't really feel the difference. But I did. And that was an area that was really tough because the dang butterfly just wouldn't die. So that's a big enemy. We're going to hopefully hit it, we're hopefully an aggro, and we're going to try and pull these guys instead. There should be two or three uh, just kind of lingering. There you go. So that's one down. There should be another one over here just hanging out. Pretty lady. And then there should be one on this side. Okay, let me go ahead and take him out before the big boy gets here. There you go. Big attack for us. I couldn't tell what he was doing there, but just same thing. He's just really tanky. He's not like incredibly tough or anything, but he's dead now, so it doesn't much matter. We usually get like two or three items from the stronger enemies, which is really neat. This right here was a mystery that took me until after I beat the game to solve. You see that ladder right there ahead of us? That is incredibly important and really cool, and I will show you exactly how to solve that. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to see that, actually. But that will be something we solve 
once we trigger the event, which I believe is probably Baron Swamp or just beating the game. So let's grab this item here and we're gonna work our way around. But just keep in mind that we will be returning to this area to solve a really cool mystery. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so we got all the items we need. Nothing crazy there. Break through the crates for, you know, more dramatic effect. Keep your weapon nice and sharp and then get ready. There's a few enemies. There's another one that's trying to ambush up, up, us up on top of the roof. So we'll take this one out first. Come on. There you go. Let him take his time to land and now he's dead. And now we can grab these items comfortably. That is a collectible. So you definitely want to grab that one. You won't fall down this bridge, believe it or not. This is actually one of the few bridges that don't collapse. I get tired of them. They have to do their little introductory scream. I'm like, just die. We have two more enemies on this side, and then we'll drop down this area. I like to follow this path in particular. It's just kind of the first thing I did, and it helps you kind of not miss anything. Give me a pretty, pretty lady. Now keep in mind that there is an item uh, up above us, and we're going to be getting it. It's on this ledge here, and I'll show you exactly what to do. So, first thing you want to do is, this. there is even treasure to be found in a collapsing shack. Find out what happened to the greedy couple, and we will. We're about to find out really soon. So, this is the fire abrasive. This is a shortcut. I mean, it's not really a shortcut. It's just a, a, a path we can open up from this side. Definitely not a shortcut to anything. But here, we do have a... Uh, a lift. We're gonna take the lift because I'm gonna show you two things. So just as kind of an example, if you look down, right, you can see either side of the wall as you're descending or something to the right, there's a little passageway there. It didn't stop, so that would be something we'd have to jump off and find. So we're gonna do that on the way back down. If you remember or recall, we just came from this area. You get another collectible, the Scribbles of the Slum Resident. And then there's the Stargazer that we uh, had just interacted with on our start of the Path of the Pilgrim. So now we've opened up a true shortcut. So we're going to go back down, and as we do, we're going to aim our camera down. And as soon as we see that large opening, we can just walk right off. Or I like to roll because it makes it look more epic. Yeah, there you go. And then you can grab this item, Dark Moon Moonstone of the Covenant. That's for special weapons. And then I just dropped down safely here. Now there actually isn't any, uh, I mean there's a ladder you can use, but there isn't any like items down here because at this point it's just mostly for you know the ambush effect. So we're all good. But we are going to make it to the main area where, you know, something happens. Oh hi. <laughs> Hello. Oh my god, that hurts. Well, at least we caught him on fire. That's good. Oh, that hurts. Okay, I gotta heal. I love this enemy, actually. It's really fun to fight. He's just kind of a jerk. Uh-oh. He does spam quite a bit, too. That's for sure. We'll get him here, though. Alright. Not very nice of you, my friend. You're not kind at all. So we got the Slum Shack Key, which, <laughs> coincidentally enough, is right there. You would have died for a shark pipe if you would have ran towards this. I just want you to know. There are no free items in this game, okay? <laughs> this is Ambush City. Uh, but before we jump into this area, I did want to show you... Well, no, I'll go ahead and show you this first. Let's open up the Slum Shack. can say hi to our new friends. This is the man. Husband and wife. So what were they, what did this greedy couple have? This is the greedy couple that was referenced in that little message in blood. A Belford Superior Corrosion Resistance Converter. So just a defensive item. Increased, ver I guess an improved version of this right here. 
All right, so not bad. Now I can show you what I was most excited about. So this is the shortcut that I was you know, telling you, hey, you're not going to be able to solve it to the end of the game, um, or at least much later. So you have the ladder there. You can grab this item, of course. But there's not really much else, right? But if you look through the window, you can see something really good. So that's something that we're going to come back for later. Anyways, it's, I thought that was just such a fun little secret, and I hope you guys are excited about it too. It's not a bad item. It's just not one that I would technically use, especially late in game. But you'll find out what it is. All right, so we've got a few things. Um, there are no items over here. It's just a little vista. So watch out for the big dude. I like to just go ahead and interrupt their potential to start a combo or attack. We have this enemy over here as well. Alright, not bad, not bad. So, so far we're doing good, you know, making our way through this entire area. Looking good. We have a bridge coming up, and once we clear this, there's another little gauntlet, if you will, and then we'll be well on our way. We've, we've yet to arrive in the Malam district, just so you know. But we're getting there, slowly but surely. This is like, again, the path of the pilgrim. So here, we've got a few things we can do. We're going to jump down this way. Grab this item here. Sharpen our blades on the way down. And then, of course, there's really nothing you can get aside from this item, so you just come across. And these crates and barrels don't have anything in them, so <laughs> saw blade. So again, I mean, not anything that's going to change the game by any means, but if you're a completionist like myself, you know the struggle. Consumables and throwable items are a plenty. Alright, check this out. You see that guy there? He doesn't like us. Let's go say hi. Just alternate R1s and R2s. He doesn't hit nearly as hard as it looks. So just be careful. I mean, that hurt, but he's alright. There you go. Now we stunned him. Now he's dead. So, Because we're dealing tons of damage, so we're going to be able to survive a lot of that. And our little friend, he left, so he didn't get to even see the spectacle. But we did defeat his little enemy here is a little makeshift guardian so <laughs> no worries now over here uh, it's the open courtyard but there is one item we need to collect it's another collectible uh, just talking about now, the sweepers Alright, so here we go. So from here, this is very Dark Souls 2, <laughs> right? There are a lot of little items you can get, but the first thing you want to do is you actually want to go up. If you don't, you'll miss a few items you can grab. And there's no way back up, as far as I know. So, aside from traveling to a Stargazer, there's no quick path up. So don't. Don't do it. Let's drop off here. You don't take any damage from that height. So then you walk on this beam, I'd get to the end of it and roll off. Don't just walk off or be lazy about it, like roll off, see, because otherwise it gets really tight like that. Come across this way here so we can grab this item. Again, none of these are going to make you OP. We come this way and then we have another beam. There is nothing behind us, so I always checked. You know, in the first place, I was like, oh, there's always look behind you. There's always something, right? But there's not. Not this time. So just roll to make sure you safely clear the area. Look down. Find the other beam. There's nothing behind us. All right? So you can kind of figure out which way to go from here. We just drop down this path because there's a beam down below. No other secrets. No other items. You can just fall off. 
and then safely without taking any fall damage. So that's how you get down safely. And we can read this little warning message here. It says, Welcome to the territory of the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. Remember, anyone who fails to pay the protection fee on time is headed straight for the coffin. It always takes me two times to read it, no matter how quickly I read. I was reading so fast. I was so proud of myself. All right, so now we've reached the Stargazer, but guess what? We're not alone. We've got friends. And if you remember these, the red fox and the black cat, ah, oh, gosh, these guys. They are con artists uh, to, the, to the end, I should say. So, yeah, let's go ahead and chat with them. Look at the Red Lobster, and it's so funny because Red Lobster is actually a restaurant where I, you know, in my area, it's kind of funny. Uh, I saw the Red Lobster in, I thought it was a joke, but I was like, oh wow, that's actually like, they're, they're going for it, so that, that was really cool. <laughs> Makes me want to go to Red Lobster. Get those buttery biscuits. All right, let's have a chat with our friends. Oh, I saw you go into the factory, but you're here, so wait, you came out of the factory? That's a new one. I thought you would have been burnt to a crisp. But look at you. Cool intact. Brother, being too frank is rude. We should praise him for being stronger than he looks. Why not join forces? Play our cards right, and we could defeat the villains who rule this area. They're the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. The baddies who torment the residents around here. We heard their hideout is stuffed with treasure. And it's a good time to liberate this place as well. Pretty sweet deal, don't you think? All you have to do is create a distraction. That's it. The rest we can handle. So, you gonna do it? I suggest you accept the offer just so that, uh, you know, the quest line is just all that more fulfilling. So accept offer. Smart choice. Look at our smart friend, Gato. We're no slouches in the fisticuffs department in a pinch. You lead. We'll bring up the rear and watch for hidden threats. Now, aside from them accompanying us, uh, they're not that strong. So, you know, I know for a fact you can actually get his weapon later in the game. I don't know about hers, but it does look familiar, so I think you can too. I just don't remember, because I didn't really use any other weapons. Listen to this dialogue. How are you, dumbass? Not very nice. Oh, he's dead. Oh, wow, they're getting in there today. Look at them go. But that's about all the help you get. Alright, so let me get this backstab in real quick before we get ambushed by the puppy dog. They swing like crazy. I'm so glad there isn't uh, friendly fire because we would have been chopped to bits. But we come up here, grab this item. There's literally nothing, no other reason for it. But a crescent moonstone is something we can use to upgrade our weapons, which we'll certainly be using in the near future. Got the Black Rabbit Brotherhood sign, and we have a little mini boss here. We have to take her out. She is pretty strong. There you go. Don't let him go crazy. Don't let them berserk. He is in the way, but let me see if I can still pull off my fatal, and I did. Lovely. All right, so not the funnest enemy. Really cool, though. <laughs> I will say this. You don't want to fight them in the narrow ledges, which uh, sometimes can be unavoidable. So here we have two paths. We have a staircase, and we have this over here. We're going to go this way. Note that the floor here is solid, right? We have a shortcut here, meaning uh, obviously going to be a way to go around. And then the floor looks a little different, right? So obviously the boards are going another way. So we'll go around it before you do this. <laughs> and then we'll be ambushed by a little friend. Make sure that you are mindful of that. And then this time we're going to ambush somebody. So we could go this way, but I suggest you go this way instead. Get the backstab. And avoid the ambush and safely pick up your goodies. 
and seize the booty. Arch break cartridge. This is a lot heavier as well, but it is going to help um, with the damage reduction. The cartridge should be here though. Oh, there it is. I was like, where is it? So that's going to help with uh, resistance to break. So now, you know, as you can see, our weight's steadily climbing up. But so is our physical damage reduction, as well as some elemental damage reductions. Here we learn about, I think it's Blairie. Blairie is a type of wine. You can see it in his, <laughs> in his hands there. That's actually going to be important for a side quest we have when we reach an area called the Lorenzini um, Arcade. So if you remember, that little shortcut is right where we were at just a few moments ago. So now we've come full circle. And now we can safely come upstairs. Alright, so here, our little friends, you know, they get tired. Whoa, hold up. It's been a while since I worked like that. I got aches, you know? And I wouldn't want to cramp your style. I'll take a breather here, then catch up later. So, yeah, that sucks. These guys are no fun at all. So they're saying, you know what, uh, we need a break. We haven't fought like that in a while. And it's not like they helped us at all, but yeah. Let's take a look outside. We've got a nice little gauntlet here. It's going to be pretty annoying. There's quite a bit of um, things that, to go around, a lot of difficulty. A lot of enemies from like up high on ledges, a really big strong enemy that um, can you know easily kill you. So just be careful here, no rushing. Grab the motivity crank, miss your falling attack. The range on the dagger is just very small, very short. So anyways. So as you saw me when I was complaining, equip Thermite. Equip the Thermite because you're going to need it. And just throw one at a time. Throw one there. They're going to catch fire and die. And then throw another. That should pretty much handle that whole situation. Let, wait until they die. So that one should die really soon. And this one should too. They catch fire with Thermite really easily, so... Now if you're crazy, like me, I like to throw one at him just to piss him off. He swings around, spins around a lot, so his attacks can be really annoying. Do not let him corner you, though. That's where his strength lies. Oh gosh. He's cornering me. Alright, we're almost dead, but we gotta be careful here. Even when you know how to beat them, sometimes they can kind of come up on you, creep up on you. But yeah, that was tough. I mean, he cornered me and he really got the better of me there, so it can happen even if you know what's going on. We get the patience amulet for that which does increase the rate at which you increase your stamina. Um, but let me just double check because I might have put my foot in my mouth. There's two types of stamina amulets. Yeah, increases stamina recovery speed. This is a good one. I love it, especially if you're using heavy weapons or running a bit heavy. It's excellent. So here, I mean, you kind of have a sprawling area here. You're going to be exploring both the bottom and, of course, the rooftops. And if you know me, I love me some rooftop exploration. But what we're going to do is come this way first. Now be careful, because remember, like I said, nothing's free. Now there is, <laughs> yep, a bear trap there. And that one usually gets me every time. Lots of items up top, but there will be a path, an opportunity to get them if you miss them. I'm going to take this guy out as well. I do want you to look up. There is a set of boards. 
and like an open area. So that would obviously mean probably a trap, right? An area we're going to fall down. So remember that for later. We've got quartz, which is going to be excellent to activate a P organ a little bit later on. Instead of going this way, come here, because this is more of a finite path. Just close it off real quick. Just be mindful of your, you know, the bear traps and all that. They are everywhere. Oh gosh. See how they kind of spam their attacks if you're not careful? Another bear trap, and you see an item there. Alright, so it's like, well, I can't reach that. And not yet, but in just a moment you will be able to. Alright, so then over here... No free items, so turn around. And we'll be our meeting our little supposed ambusher. I'm going to go ahead and max out my health. We don't want to go this way yet. We want to come up. And you know, I am going to switch over to this. I just feel like the coil is a better weapon to destroy dimensional butterflies. And there is one just up ahead. Remember, do not overcommit. Because you'll fall down otherwise. There you go. Dimensional Butterfly is dead. So is this lady. Now we can switch back to our proper weapon here. You can grab this. And yes, there is an item down here. We're going to grab it in just a second. We're going to come across this way first. And this is the other side of the wall we were on just a few moments ago. Before we almost died to that big guy. Yeah, that guy was destroying me. We got the bone cutting saw blade. I know you guys wanted to see the weapons. It's a massive weapon. <laughs> massive. I don't like the moveset that much. I like the moveset of the Holy Sword of the Ark much better. Um, but, I mean, it's very strong, nonetheless. Alright, so now... Just really quickly, before we go da back that way, we're going to come here, grab the rest of the items. Do not fall down there. If the boards are going a different direction, it's a good hint. You're probably going to fall down. So, see? That would have been that path I showed you earlier. So now we're going to come this way, break through the crates, grab this item, and then we're going to go back around where I said, hey, I know there's an item there, but... And the reason I do it in this order is because a little event that happens. Nothing crazy, but something we see all too often. The floor broke out from underneath us. Alright, so there you go. Now we've obtained everything we can as of now, so we need to go to the other side. So, remember I said let's circle back around later? Well, we're going to pass the ladder this time. Come back through here. Kill the puppy dog before it tries to get a, you know, a one over on us. Go through here. And we can grab Gemini's Iron Protection. There's nothing else to grab here. So we're going to come back this way. Remember, there's going to be a lot of ambushes in this area. This is, uh, that kind of area. Then we have another friend. Look at the boards. They're different. Okay. Now they're dead. Obviously, there's like no actual doors you can use, so we're just going to be coming up through the ladder. And then, we're going to show up right in front of a uh, ring phone, which is incredibly important. You want to answer. This is Arlecchino, the, the king, the riddler of, what, the king of riddles? I think the answer choices are incredibly funny here. A boa constrictor who finished digesting? What? Or a candle? <laughs> Solving 
it's your connection to candle because the answer is right god you get it but you're not feeling violent huh even better it's as good a time as any to grant you this boon now take your new key and say give me some room i can tell you're enjoying these times that we spar i take leave of you now So we obtained the Trinity Key. The Trinity Key is of course the one we can go back to the cathedral and use at the end of this session here. But yep. So now there's two, th two things you can do. I just say save yourself the trouble, right? <laughs> and open up this shortcut. I mean I am sure that you guys are great at platforming and Souls games, but if you're not, it would suck to have to go all the way around. So now you're there, right? We haven't moved or skipped anything. So make sure you get a running start, jump across, grab your shot put, because why not? Who doesn't love a good shot put? And it really doesn't matter. You can jump down and go back the way you came. Honestly, you have the path open now. Before you run to the left and grab that item, break through these crates and grab this one instead. Gets you a vivid ergo fragment. And then you can grab your hidden moonstone. All right, so we got some friends that are gonna, you know, come say hi to us in a little bit. Remember, no free items. So look up. Catch him by surprise instead. And then now we can go say hi to our other friends. He won't actually make it all the way. His little aggro animation didn't take him that far. So just, just save him the trouble. There's a dog in a cage. What do dogs in cages do best? They break out of them. All right, so now we can go this way. Hey, this is a free item. There is no death awaiting us. You can see the item on the ledge there. We're gonna grab that in just a moment. And no, you can't break through here, even though it looks like you can. You certainly cannot. Free will is an illusion. All right, so here we go. We've got two pathways here. This is just a dead end, nothing to worry about. And then we have this. This gets me every time. Do you see, do you see any kind of bear trap? I don't, but let's move forward. Anyways, I do not know how to avoid that. I've been bear trapped every single time. Alright, so remember as we approach here, you hear a dog, right? So it's kind of a good sign. There's a dog gonna kill you in a few seconds. As per usual, they break out of their gates. We got the Crescent Moonstone for upgrade materials, and we can take this ladder. There's really not much exploration here, you just kinda of locked off aside from this item here. Get the Fable Catalyst, drop back down, and then we can go back this way. Now we're on the other side of the Red Lobster Inn. This, of course, remember, our first Stargazer when we reached the Malum District was the other side, or the front entrance. This is kind of like the back entrance, if you will. So let us uh, navigate this area, which is nice and fun. The enemies here are so annoying because they aggro from like a mile away. This guy's super, super... Just a pain in the butt. Yeah, his attacks reach you from like a mile away. He is susceptible to fire though, which is great. Ouch, she got me anyways. I just need him to commit just a little harder, please. There you go. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna let you hit me as much as you want because I'm gonna kill this guy. And then you get to die next. So yeah, I like to bait him out in an area that's actually feasible to fight them in. We can heal now, but just be mindful that there are enemies that are gonna wake up. So there's one there where my head's pointed and there's one right here where my head's pointed. So two enemies, aside from the one that we just fought, will be spawning in or jumping down to try and ambush you. 
So you gotta be very mindful of that, like in your, you know, look around and, and try and fight where you're comfortable fighting. Grab this item and then this girl will aggro. She's just taking her time. She's get, doing her morning stretches. Come on. Can't reach him from up above, so come on, girl. Oh, she's not gonna do it. Okay, fine. Well, there is an item over here by the piano we want to get. It's just a star fragment, but. Alright, so they're dead. Grab this other item here. And then before we go upstairs, we don't want to go upstairs just yet. Grab this item first, and then come out this way. Um, there will be the shortcut, which I'm going to show you. This, of course, leads to the Stargazer and that very first entrance I was talking to you about right there. But if you go back this way and look you know, to the left, you have a little collectible talking about the Monad Charity House, and then you have a ladder. This is easy to miss, actually. This is the Black, um, the black Market Merchant. Or, yeah, Black Market Merchant that you have to show the coin in order to access his, his ware. So, first, skip all that get this instead legion caliber so you can upgrade your legion arm i thought there were no more survivors but you you're new i do love a bit of commerce but the bosses are really strict about who i'm allowed to sell to are you with the black rabbit brotherhood uh sure i can't tell what's real and what's fake to be honest ah, my job is selling stuff not detecting forgeries if it's fake, you'll be the one to get punished, not me. <laughs> so now we can take a look at his shop. He does have a few items here that are unique. Um, we've got the record, which I suggest you purchase. The bramble cu curve sword. And then the arch shock cartridge. These are uh, abrasives that you can purchase infinite amounts of. So he's going to be good to get like a lot of throwables and things like that. There's other merchants that kind of focus on things like uh, petrification ampules, which is like Paul and Dina. But this guy's excellent for like all of your elemental uh, throwing items and even items to charge, you know, like your abrasive. So how do you imbue weapons with stuff? Really cool. So now we've got records. We've got a lot of things. The records are important, uh, not only for your achievements, if you're an achievement or trophy hunter, but uh, it's important for something you can get at the end of the game, let's just say. So I tagged the... Um, the whatchamacallit here the stargazer and now we're maxed out so we don't need to fight everybody again instead remember that staircase we're gonna come up that side we're gonna say hi to our little friend I love just stabbing her in the back it's just kind of something I do kind of just loosens up the gears a bit and then you walk outside this way and then we'll see our little friends once again You've got all kinds of skills. Hey, everything went smooth as silk. And you know me, I don't impress easy. Sure, but I gotta ask, you really gonna take on the Black Rabbit Brotherhood by yourself? Uh, yes. And just so you know, the Black Rabbit Brotherhood does consist of four people. So will we be fighting four people at the same time? Hmm. The answer is a resounding sort of. So when we go through here, this is kind of the point of no return, right? They're not going to help us fight. We have to fight by ourselves. This is one of my favorite fights. Um, people hate this fight. They think it's very unfair and whatever else, but I'll break it down as best I can and hope that the Salamander Dagger pulls us through. Alright, we'll be facing off with the big guy first. So 
So first up, we have the big guy. Be sure to watch his elbow. That's going to help you time the perfect guards. Even so, I mean, he attacks in the longest combos you've seen thus far. But he is not easy by any means. Alright, he just completely whiffed all those, and I'm fine, I'm fine with it. <laughs> not gonna complain about that. When the other little siblings come out, always target them as a priority, but keep your eye on the big guy. He will charge you occasionally. Like so. There you go. And just block like crazy. They, This uh, little brother, or little sister, actually attacks pretty annoyingly. Rapid succession, so just block a lot. Can always time the guards, but that flip will slow you down and kind of set you up for the charge if you're not watching. Big charge here, we gotta watch it. There you go. Don't worry about durability during these fights. Wait until after the sibling goes away. There you go. Max out the durability. Now we focus on the fight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, and then the fourth one. Get in a lot of charge attacks. You want to make sure you can Max out this uh, weapon damage we're doing here because we've got to break this weapon if you can. This guy's a monster. Big attack here. Get the critical. And then we're going to heal. Focus on the little brother. Sometimes they can move back from the puppet string. Super annoying. But it happens. Watch for the big charge attack. There we go. Big critical on this guy here. Should be the end of him. I'm gonna go ahead and fix my durability or waste a hail. Either way. Totally wasted the heal. That was my other strategy. Broke the sword. Heal. And then we're going to switch over to our little guy. Oh gosh, that's so annoying. He's doing the same thing we're doing. He had the same strategy I had, my friend. This guy has the biggest combos, but... He's not very strong, at least. None of them actually deal tons of damage in that phase, like in this, like, while they're fighting you at the same time, so it's not too cheap. We are gonna heal. Dodge if we can, <laughs> or get whacked in the face, that's fine too. Try to use it to my ability, but let's see here. There you go. Get the critical. You go away now. Three, four, and then a slow one. We're gonna get another charge attack in because I'm greedy. We'll get the critical. We have a heal if we need it, so let's fix our durability. There you go. Three, four, big attack here. Spam R1 until he's dead. And that is the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. Very tough fight. I think it's excellent. People think it's unbalanced, but it's really not. The damage that they deal when they're out in the field together is so much less, or it's just heavily reduced. 
Let's see what happens. Looks like uh, we've killed the big brother. They are mourning their loss. Trying to take his body. Yeah, so that's the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. A very tough fight. I think it's fun, though. People think it's unfair. We get a taunt and we get some resplendent er ergo. This is really funny. You guys are going to be like, but this happens. Like, so People miss the item up ahead, so just watch carefully, okay? I don't know how you could miss this, but people have missed it. Go inside their base. Okay, and then from here... You can grab this item. It's just a collectible. It's just the Black Rabbit Brotherhood's kind of going back and forth with each other in a ledger. Turn left, okay? And here you will see a painting. This painting is incredibly important if you want to obtain all the weapons and just from a plot perspective as well. It's really awesome. It looks quite familiar, don't you think? As a matter of fact, I'll show you just how familiar it might look. So we're going to go here. We're going to go to our clothes. And we're going to go here. Equip it. That's a damn good, you know, replica, right? So we've got some mysterious little boy in a portrait, and we have our guy wearing the same suit, in fact. Hey, check this out. Looks like you, sort of, from a certain angle. You know, if you squint. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. No, it, it looks exactly like you. I mean, you see it, right? With the nose and the... Right? So we grab it. This is going to be one of the items we do read. I like to do like lore throughs, but um, this time I haven't really been reading the items. This is more so for you guys to check, speed things up. This is a portrait of an aristocratic boy. It pictures a beautiful boy with a peevish expression, but delicate face. Extremely vivid paintings are said to possess souls, sometimes. D. Gray, the genius painter, denied all such conjectures. However, his death and the rumors about his paintings are still shrouded in a thick fog. Now, who would D. Gray be in a fairy tale type or story type approach. Probably Dorian Gray. And if you don't know about his story, look it up. It's fantastic. But anyway, so now what we can do is we can come up here, come up the steps, grab this little lonely item waiting for us to pick it up. And it is a collectible, so you definitely want to nab that before you head out. And then there will be a chest we can loot behind this counter. another piece of quartz and then we just navigate through this little hallway here and there will be a lift but I wonder where this lift leads to right we've been so far from the hotel where is this gonna lead us to Giangio? What's Giangio doing here? You have no idea how happy I am to see you, Mr. Stalker. Hello. It's a relief to see you. I I'll get straight to the point. I found the gold coin tree. Who knew it was right beside us? But there's a problem. When I tried to, to, to pick the gold coin fruit, it, it resisted me. I couldn't even get close. It actually burned me. It's probably because I have the petrification disease. P -p Pathetic, yeah. So close yet so far. If you pick some gold coin fruit for me, I'll give you a reward. Alright, so we can talk to Giangio. He'll tell us a little bit about the gold coin fruit. I heard the alchemists made a device capable of fully utilizing gold coin fruit. I ignored it, assuming it was just a legend. You hear all sorts of wild tales about alchemists. Now that I know gold coin fruit actually exists, though, perhaps it's all true. Interact with the Saint Test statue at the Grand Exhibition. You might be able to use the other powers of the gold coin fruit. 
Now that St. Tess statue, I'm going to be honest, there's a point where you get a key to access this area. I completely forgot about it until much, much later. And I was like, oh, that's what they were talking about. I won't do that in this playthrough. I'll show you exactly where it, where it is and how, you know, as soon as you can actually access it. So this, uh, uh, the gold coin fruit grows like on a timer. So you can get up to eight pieces of fruit every so odd minutes. I think it's every 10 minutes. Uh, so one piece of fruit per 10 minutes, I believe. But how do you gain fruit more quickly? I might look urbane now, but I, I, I used to be a farmer. I, I'm, I'm also interested in growing trees. I heard about a vendor who sells plant alchemy boosters. They might work on this tree, too. If you come across such boosters, bring them to the tree. So essentially, the boosters will expedite the rate at which things grow. This is a beautiful cutscene, so I'm just going to let it play out. to see the gold coin tree in a place like this. So that's the gold coin fruit. You can use it to exchange items with Giangio. And guess what? <laughs> we are literally in the courtyard of Hotel Crot, a secret or hidden courtyard. So that's incredibly interesting, right? Considering we thought we were so far away in the Malum district. Let's talk with everybody, see what they have to say. I'll use my power to help you. He's not saying much. I'm just kidding. Let's go ahead and level up, though, while we're here. Why not? Those are the three attributes I'm going to focus on for now. Now remember, there's a few things. So if you ever get confused, you know, normally you will have a stargazer you can reach, and then you can see like where the icons are, you act like you're going to teleport and you'll say, oh okay, so I have to talk with Geppetto and Pulcinella. So let's do that real quick. I usually talk to Sophia first to level up. We can talk with Vanini, see what he has to say. I always welcome. Nothing at all. Pulcinella will have something to say because we have the smiling bunny mark. The house of Vanini. So request appraisals. Smiling bunny mark. Oh dear. It's just the mark of the black Rabbit Brotherhood, a notorious band of stalkers. The stalkers as a unified force ceased to be after their defeat at the Battle of the Workshop Tower. The Black Rabbit Brotherhood took over the Marlon District after that. I believe you could use this mark to move safely whilst on the Black Rabbit Brotherhood's turf, to use their unsophisticated vernacular, and give you entree to the Black Market as well. But be careful, sir. The Black Rabbit Brotherhood is quite infamous for how they treat interlopers. If they catch you, they'll put you in the liar's coffin. Yes, I believe it is as unpleasant as it sounds. Ah, and I see we have new physical records to catalogue for the collection. Such effort deserves commensurate reward, don't you think? So we get the Crescent Moonstone, but also, a lot of times, um, whenever you give them those items, not only will it give you a reward, but you can also expand his um, inventory, so it's really neat. I know my way around she doesn't have anything new to say, so that's fine. Paul and Dina wouldn't have anything else to say either. But Antonia should, because we did find out about the secret of the tree. If you came from the Marlon district, you probably saw the gold coin tree. I knew the tree was at the hotel, of course. I'm not the only one. The alchemists showed great interest in its fruit. I heard it's optimized to respond to ergo, but that's not the important part. 
The Krat disaster caused the alchemists to fight amongst themselves. Many people died or went missing. That's the real tragedy of the Rose Estate. They stopped cooperating with the alchemists. Protecting the hotel was too important. I sealed away the gold coin tree so no one would fight over it. I had no idea the Black Rabbit Brotherhood was stealing from it. The hotel is Krat's last place of refuge. I am obligated to protect it. I'm going to protect you and the people inside until the day I die. If you were in my position, you'd do the same, I'm sure. People have no thanks for Alright, so that's that. This is Avadoro. Let's talk with our little kitty cat. Easy, easy. He's not as angry as he was, but you know. A great weapon calls for a great warrior. So we don't have any additional ergo at this point. So we can't get any new weapons or amulets. Let's go talk to the old man. As you can see, I've mentioned it, you know, countless times before, but. The interconnectedness of the worlds and the level design in general is just fantastic. You're back. The Malam district was as grim as we feared, was it not? But with the Black Rabbit Brotherhood out of the picture, we can focus elsewhere. And why not strike at the root of the problem? The king of Puppet's lair is on Rosa Isabel Street. Perhaps the puppet frenzy will come to an end if we can take down their king. Go to Antonia and get the key to Rosa Isabel Street. I already let her know you'll be coming by. I always remember these favors you've done for me. Though it pains me to send someone so precious into such peril. This portrait. Oh, I remember it fondly. I thought it was lost forever. I had no idea the Black Rabbit Brotherhood had stolen it. To think that you... You have brought it back to me. Forgive a foolish old man his memories. Memories of a happier time, my son. I know just where to hang it in the hotel. And there it is. You get a gesture, and now we have a portrait hanging that looks strikingly familiar to us. Really, really bizarre, if you ask me. Really cool, too. But this is important for later, so don't forget it. Let's see if he has any more dialogue to exhaust. The city has nope. Me and we will be going to Rosa Isabel Street. But first, let's activate some P organs and then close out some side quests. Let's see. Increase stagger duration. I'm never mad at that. Let's see here. Increased weapon durability speed. I don't mind that either. So now we can at least roll from whenever we're knocked down. And that's going to be important for a little bit later. Some of the fights and some of the bosses, as you can tell, love spamming when you're on the floor. If you change shape, I just wanted to show you this. Um, you're going to learn that there's ways to actually change your appearance. Uh, we haven't experienced them yet. But we will very soon, okay? So that is something that I did want to share with you, just kind of a, as a teaser, if you will. I am going to go ahead and uh, equip some, actually consume some Ergo. We don't need very many, I don't think. I'll just do maybe 10 before we speak with Antonia and get the key. Because there's still another thing we need to get. We need to use our Trinity key, right, and open the Sanctum. I know my way around the but let's see what else we can upgrade. We have four Crescent Moonstones. If we were gonna get this up to 
level six that would require all four so we want to balance out our upgrades a bit right make sure all of our weapons are nice and strong there will be a point in the near future we can get pretty much infinite infinite amounts of the crescent moonstone which is really cool so don't you worry you're gonna be just fine now we go over here, we'll talk with Antonia, we'll get the key, and then we need to use a key we already have in our possession. Hurry up. I heard from Geppetto. Rosa Isabel's fleet is ever so dangerous, I'm told. I hoped we wouldn't have to unlock the passage there. But if we want to stop this disaster once and for all, I fear we have no choice. Geppetto and I care about you very much, you know. Stay safe. For both of us. I feel like my time is slowly coming to an end. However, it's a nice feeling to know that someone waits for you. That someone cares. Please take care out there. Alright, so now we got the Rosabelle Street entrance key. I'll show you guys where to use that later. Now we need to go ahead and utilize the Trinity. All right, so from here, we're gonna to wanna to use our Trinity Sanctum key. So we need to teleport to, at first, you know, it's kind of difficult to nail down the exact location, but just go to the St. Francesco Cathedral Chapel. And from the chapel, we're going to kind of have to backtrack a bit and go through some of the platforming area where there was a lot of the um, beams that we're walking on, things like that. It's a little annoying, but there's a sort of shortcut we can use, and I'm going to use it, um, and or at least try to successfully use it to show you. So from this chapel, what we want to do is we want to just sprint on over. We're going to try not to fight every single person. There's really no point. But along this pathway here, you really don't have very many enemies to fight. And all we're trying to do is reach the, um, the actual sanctum itself. So remember this pathway was just nice and quiet. We'll go down this ladder. And if you recall, we did um, reverse the lift. So now the lift is always going up instead of down. So this way right here, if we wait for the little platform to extend, one, two, three, boom. We're gonna take it all the way to the top just so I can kind of show you guys what to do. So remember, if you take it all the way up to the top, you're gonna be right where the mini boss was. And we're just waiting patiently here. Another five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, boom. So now we can come down here. And you see this right here? That's what we're gonna try and get to. So we're gonna roll. And then we're gonna roll again right here. Sprint forward. And then we're up on the second level at least. So it saves us some trouble, right? We're gonna wait for this enemy here. I mean, otherwise you'd have to go through that entire sequence, and it, it's pretty annoying. I mean, there's ladders everywhere, I mean, there's all kinds of junk, so... I hope that saved you guys a few seconds. Okay. Alright, now from here you can just safely go down this ladder, and then we should be right where we need to be. But I hope that that saved you guys some time. Um, it, otherwise, it's quite annoying to go through that entire platforming sequence again. But you can hear the... The ball o lightning. We're gonna come up here. Remember, there's an enemy to the left. Get hit. Yay! <laughs> ah, of course. Alright, now he's dead, so we baited him and it worked. So we're gonna come up here now, and remember, the ball is still able to hit us, so wait until it passes. Right at that moment, you can sprint past. And now we can access the Trinity Sanctum that was tucked away in the corner here. And here we have another room. I always like to look at this. Trust and truth are one. The end of the Path of Stars will lead to a great eternal life. And then we have this here. Test of the day. Even a noble cleric will curse God if he plucks out his fingernails. Obviously this... Like Trinity Sanctum, these these sanctums and this little cult. I mean, there's some stuff going on here, right? We had the Black Cat's Amulet, which is really cool. It helps us to uh, reduce our fall damage pretty much permanently. And let's see here. I'll show you what we got. The outfit. 
the Monster Sweepers Hunting Apparel. The hunting apparel of the stalker organization of sweepers. The brutality of the alleyways can be tamed by no one. The sweepers come mostly from the alleyways, and their fighting style is rough and ruthless. They can be hired with money, but buying their trust is difficult. So we're with that for now. We're looking pretty raunchy. I like it. I like it a lot. And then, of course, we did get the... Uh, the... Black Cat's Amulet. And this reduces your fall damage. So pretty cool. But anyways, another Sanctum out of the way. Sadly, this one doesn't have as cool of a little shortcut like the last one did, so we do have to kind of backtrack a bit. But instead, I think if we move forward, it might be a little better. Let's see. I'm just testing it out. I honestly haven't timed how quickly we can get from one area to the next. But the key is we just want to get to the main area, right? We're much stronger now, so these enemies aren't going to pose much of a threat. We just need to get back. You could always backtrack and literally take the steps back. But, let's see, maybe this will be faster. All we need to do is wait for the broken platform and then we sprint and jump across. Sprint and jump across. And then we're gonna go here. And we should be able to take the platform down. And I think that's faster, to be honest, than going back the other way. But let's just keep going back down safely. And now we're here. Of course, we do need to go back this way and up that incredibly long or <laughs> tall ladder. <laughs> it's a long ladder, I guess. You know, I didn't wear a lot of the outfits in my first playthrough, and um, I gotta say, I absolutely love the outfit I got with the digital deluxe version. That was just uh, it was sexy. Red and black, man, it's just my favorite colors mixed together in one outfit. It looked great. I really did like it. Anyways, now that we're here, we're gonna arrive at the chapel. And then from the chapel, we can return to the uh, Hotel Crot, and we'll end our stream there in preparation for Rosa Isabel Street, which is a really, really difficult area, I would say, especially in terms of like what you've experienced thus far. It's much different. I think it's fun, and it's and there's literally the entire street area that you have to get to. So you have to navigate the city to get to Rosa Isabel Street, and then once you're at Rosa Isabel Street, there's an opera house that you have to navigate. There's some excellent side quests along the way there, and uh, once you're there, you reach the actual stage, or the ballroom, or whatever you want to call it, the I guess it's the stage of the opera house. That is the ultimate location that you're trying to get to, your, your final destination, if you will. So you have to get to Rosa Isabel Street, and then you have to go through Rosa Isabel Street to the opera house, navigate the opera house and then get to the boss there which of course is the puppet king so um yeah be prepared for that so so far i think we did a great job uh, we went through the malum district and uh, we used our trinity key we expanded our well our collection with vanini anyways and pulcinella and aside from that we got the key and in order for us to access the next area i'll show you exactly how to do that in the next stream i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to like and subscribe it lets me know you want more content just like this also, uh, a super thanks is always appreciated, and if you do want to uh, see more content like this, as I said before, let me know, because I do plan on doing a Blasphemous 2 100% guide, as well as Lords of the Fallen. Um, I'll do a playthrough when it initially comes out on the 13th, because I wasn't able to get my hands on it early, but um, if we like it enough, and if you guys like it enough, we can definitely do a 100% guide as well. Anyways, this one's that you guys are awesome. Uh, your support and your viewership is so much more appreciated than you could possibly know. I mean... You guys are literally helping make my dream a reality as a full-time content creator, and I just want to say thank you all so much for that. Um, if you do enjoy the other set of things aside from just guides and you want to look at things like lore, my main channel does have a dedicated series for Liza P and many of your other favorite games on there as well where we t t dive into different theories. Uh, you know, explore, you know, obscure topics and things like that in your favorite game. So please be sure to check it out. Anyways, you guys are awesome. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until next time, it's the Inhuman One signing out.